Hey everybody, uh, welcome to part two of Under the Hood of my tune Choro Number no. One. And I didn't get to finish the video yesterday analyzing the rest of the song. Once again, a lot of this music that I'm going to be bringing to you, that I'm analyzing and talking about, stories behind the tunes, analyzing the music, is intended for students, musicians, or people that are interested in this. It's not going to be some of the videos that I make before this, that I've made before, are more about talking about the shows. These are going a little slower for people that are interested in what's under the hood of the process of a, of a musician. How do we write a piece of music? How do we improvise? What goes on in the art? What the making of that art? And so I want to bring that to you. And all of these videos I'm going to start making available to patrons only for just five bucks a month. Um, become a patron of Strings Attached and you get this content. I think it's going to be very valuable to many of you out there. And right now I don't have a lot up there, but I'm going to be adding just as much as possible to make a really interesting library of content online for uh, being a Strings Attached patron. So if you just tuned in, this is a live video and I'm going through Choro number one, which is an original piece that I wrote in the style of a Brazilian Choro. And feel free to jump in and ask questions. I can see your questions and that makes the process even more fun. So uh, just in looking at the piece uh, again from yesterday, through the process of talking about it, I've discovered some ways to actually, what I think, make it better. Now one of the things I wanted to address is, and I didn't think I had talked about this last time, many of you that are, have never written a piece of music or are interested in writing a piece of music, when you see this process you might think, well this is just all analyzation and is my music composition just math? Is there any inspiration? Is there any, um, you know, just coming up with the music out of thin air? And yes, that's part of the process, as a matter of fact. So this piece it wasn't like I sat down and just analyzed every single note from one note to the next. No, it's a it's a balance between the two two um, realms. You know, uh, I may hear something and play it, and then try something out based on theory, based on a concept, and using my ear and my sense of taste, that's where I decide if something's good or not, and that's where it gets exciting. Or if I, you know, when it comes down to it, it's basically what I like, and so I might put something down that's just pure in my ear, comes out of nowhere, and look at it, and I might stay in, in the ear mode and just keep playing by ear, and then go back and look at it, and then use theory in my sense of, of uh, what is behind the mechanics of music to make it better. So I, when I was uh, just starting out in the Austin music scene in the early 80s, I used to hang out with these um, group of songwriters, and they didn't know much about music theory. And I would bring these music theory concepts to them, and they would say, "Will, well, if you just if you can't hear it, what what's the point of of bringing these concepts which don't have any?" And I used to say, "Well, what the concepts can do is open up up your ears to other areas that you may not have gone just by your ear alone." And so when you have the theory and the vocabulary, you can try things out and go, hmm, "How does that sound?" And then that opens your ear up, so where you start hearing these other kinds of chords, you know, um, as possibilities. It opens up more possibilities, more tonal colors that weren't available to you previously without the theory. And then your ear starts hearing these things naturally. So, um, And I've, I've always wanted to have that conversation open to, well, what is complex and what is simple? You know, a lot of people might say that just a C major chord, well, just keep it to triads, it's simple. But there's many different ways you can play a C major chord. You can play it in versions you know, what not. So, um, <clears throat> so, anyway, I just wanted to say that if you're starting out composing, that I would encourage you to live in both worlds, to live in, you know, just playing completely by ear. You know, that could be music to somebody. Or, uh, you know, writing completely from a theoretical standpoint and see where, how that opens your ear up to possibilities. You could sit down. So let's just go to the music now. I'm not going to talk more on that. If anybody has any questions or comments about what I just said, go ahead and put them in the, in the feed. We're going to go right back to the piece of music. And let's get this all set up. So we were on uh, the B section here, uh, which starts right here. And I was working actually with this second ending and moving into the new key area of C. Okay? This whole area up here, up here is basically an A minor, and I decided 
theoretically, I said, well, what if I go to, to, to the relative major, which is C? And one of the things that I've been playing with to review is a lot of these half-step, you know, sidestepping motions, you know, the, the black keys, the notes in the cracks, okay? And I want to continue that idea kind of throughout the piece, even if I go to a new key area like C. So, in thinking more about this, when I was playing with it on the last video, if you see, we're going from this um, Neapolitan VI chord to the V chord to A minor, the one chord. Now, what I did was is I put, I suggested putting in a, an F sharp, which make it an A minor VI, right? And going to the F7, I mean to the G7, which is a nice chromatic movement going from F sharp, right? The six degrees F sharp going to the dom to the seventh degree of the G7, which then resolves to the C. Now, what I what you don't want in classical harmony, you don't want parallel fifths. So if I if it was A minor to G, that's we generally try to steer away from that. So using that concept, I thought, well, how could I make it not parallel fifths from here to here? Right? How could I make it not parallel fifths? Is that too loud? I can be softer. And anyway, so going from the A minor to the G, so then I thought, well, wait a minute, A minor 6 is almost like D7, with that F sharp in there. If I, if I just actually change one note, that E to the D, now we have a, see the difference? Now we have a D7. So really that A minor 6 is kind of like a 5 of 5. It's a 5 of the G7. And what's really cool because again we hear that root movement in half steps from F sharp, not root movement. Sorry, we have the half step movement in the chords, going from F sharp to F to E, the third of the C. You guys, follow that. So we got F sharp on the A minor six, going to F on the G seven, going to the third on the C. So if I make this a D over A, what does that sound like? Then it's going to sound like this. Then that actually removes the parallel fifths. Then we have a nice sound like this. And now we're in the key of C, and that's a really beautiful chromatic movement. Now, what if I wanted to keep that chromatic movement instead of okay? So we got F sharp here. If I back up one measure, what if I wanted to start on a G? So I have on this E7 G going to F sharp, going to F, going to C. You know, I'm, again, I'm just trying things out and and seeing what they sound like. Just throwing it up there. Hey, what would that sound like? Now, a G against this G sharp, in jazz terms, would be a sharp 9. So I'd have to make this chord an E7 sharp 9, going to the D over A, going to the... I'm sorry, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's kind of nice. So based on taste, I would decide if I wanted that. So, I mean, uh, that, that's just an idea. I'm going to leave it out to you guys. What do you think? Sharp 9. And what's cool, I really like songs and I like um, that have this chromatic movement disguised in the chord progression. Another one of those songs I can give you an example of is uh, Don't Know Why by Nora Jones. If you listen to the melody, it starts on the 7. So you've got this half step thing going. Actually, I didn't play the chord progression correctly. Let me do it again. So if I just play the chords, you might not hear it. And somebody that's not a musician would actually is going to hear this. Wait a second. So it's this beautiful chromatic line that goes all the way down like this. It ends on the third of the last of the one chord. But when she's singing the melody. No, check it out. Here's the melody. Okay, you don't really hear that line in there, but now if I sing the line, now you're going to hear it. And it's implied. So this is, the, this is a chromatic line that's your ear just wants it to go from one note to the next. So this is kind of what I'm doing in here. I'm giving you an example in a Nora Jones song. I'm trying to actually do that kind of thing, and a lot of great pop songs have this. A lot of great Tin Pan Alley songs have this, because the composers were sophisticated back then, okay? 
So we've got, so I'm trying to do this here with, and then the way that Nora Jones does it in her song, I'll sing it for you. So you got, you start off on the root. Actually, you start on the major seventh, so. Here's the root. So it's, I know I'm not the best singer, but. Isn't that beautiful? It just kind of falls down. So that's the, the concept that I'm trying to do here in these three measures. So if you're not a musician and you don't understand what I'm talking about, I'm sure you can hear what I'm talking about these three measures, okay? So that's how I got us, so I was using that technique to get us into this new key. So now we're, so I'm changing this, actually this second bar here, I mean the second ending to D, instead of A minor 6, I change one note, now that makes it a 5, and then I'm going to C. Remember I had the idea of actually doing a G to D flat to C? What would that sound like? Let's try that. So this is what you do, composers, Beethoven even this, Beethoven had reams full filled of of options and he he would just do basically permutate out so many options for a theme or a chord progression and then he would pick one so this is kind of what we're doing we to the technique. and then now what would sound like with a d flat would be like this if I put a D flat in there and that's called a tritone substitution because the G to the D flat is a tritone. Right? Going to the C. Okay, let's keep going. C. I already talked about this part. You know, what I wanted to do was kind of retain that Spanish flavor, which in this Spanish music they, they, they like to play around with the sixth degree a lot, especially in a major key. So this whole thing does that sound like a Spanish or a Latin flavor? Okay, so. Now this, I just kind of played this by ear when I made it up. I wasn't thinking, okay, I'm going to play the sixth degree. <coughs> okay. And then, again, I'm playing with this half-step deal again, up here on the F, and then I'm doing on F-sharp here. And then look, here's that thing, with the, the E to D-sharp top here, right? But up here it's in A minor, down here it's in C. And again, I'm going to that sixth degree, which is very Latin. So the, now this, B flat, right? We had it over here in the Neapolitan sixth chord, now we have it. And I, I don't, I, I just, that's just something that I picked out of the air. <laughs> And uh, so that's what D minor is the, we're in the key of C, it's the, what chord is it? It's the two chord. And then if I change it to F sharp, that makes it a 505, right? Four half step stuff. Okay. Now I just repeat again, I'm going to repeat the, the beginning of the B section with a variation. So when you're writing music, you repeat a lot of things. You start with something that the ear has already heard, and then you might make a variation leading it into a new world, okay? So I take, again, this whole first part. Now, so here I went, stayed on the C. This is where I actually take a little side trip, so. So I'm going to that sixth degree, that Latin thing, right? So it's, I'm doing the exact same thing here, but now I make it a C7, which sets up going to the four chord. And now here it kind of gets to sound a little bit like ragtime. All right? When every time I get to this section, I think, oh, this is like Scott Joplin. <laughs> so you could even go. And the, you could play something. Four chord, and then I just do a sharp four. This should be a, a D sharp. Playing with that D sharp again. Very common progression in tip alley music. So this is one. So so we got four sharp four one six two five. Now what I did here, I started this off. Okay, the melody is actually outlining this sixth chord really well. And then I thought, okay, 
what can I do in the next part? Keep the notes diatonic, but the chords be a little bit out of the key. What notes can I pick that are diatonic that'll fit this A flat chord? Because I didn't want to just do a one, six, two, five. Instead of going to one, six, two, I went to a flat six, A flat. And so what, can, what notes can I pick that will fit into that chord? Well, the 13th, right? <laughs> And the third, going down a half step, there's a half step thing again. So I keep the half step. And I love this motion. That's the outlining the G13. So all of these notes kind of tell you harmonically what's going on, but are also in the key of C. But then how am I going to get back now back to the A section up here, which is A minor? And when people play this, they get kind of they get they're kind of confused by the feel because <laughs> it works out to a weird number of bars but you've got the okay so back here on the F now we're back to C and then usually this is where they get they're wondering what now I'm doing a this would normally be what a E would be a three chord or a five of six. Six is the minor key, relative minor. So that's how I get back. So, and again, I bring this little cell here, the E to the D sharp, to get the ear. Oh, we're going back to the top now. And then I just go back and repeat the top. Take a coda, <laughs> and as you can see, I make the coda. I look down here. Basically, the the it's taking the first ending putting that and then a nice little A minor ending so we end an A minor all this is taste so let's hear what it sounds like from F the four chord I'll just play everything this is kind of ragtimey and then A flat all these notes are act these the melody notes are all in C So it's basically like the whole idea of composing is how do you start and home, go away, and come back? How, do you, where are you going? How are you going to get there? And that's the fun of of doing a lot of this. And I'm going to show you the whole piece here. So I think I have been through the whole thing, and this was a lot of fun. And if you get the idea, this is a Brazilian choro written. I say a piece written in the style of a Brazilian choro. Whoops. I'm trying to get that back. Technical difficulties here. All right, so let me turn the camera. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, you can get this piece. It will be uploaded to the patron area for uh, stringsattached.bandcamp.com. And more and more videos like this about my original pieces, about other pieces of music, will be gradually created and uploaded. For, if you become a patron for five bucks a month, you'll have access to this just for a limited time. I'm not sure how long I will make all of this music available for five bucks a month, but in the beginning, while we're getting this started, that's what we'll do. And I'd love to hear from you, involve you in the process. What would you like to see me do? What would you like to be involved in? Uh, there are also there are going to be interviews with other artists, live streams with other artists, all kinds of great things we want. I want to make this something that you're involved in, and we can have fun together. We can have fun learning. You know that you're supporting an artist wherever you live in the world and uh, that uh, we can all have fun together with this. So anyway, thanks for watching our uh, this behind or what is it called under the hood video for Charo number one. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. You guys take care. OK, let me know where you're watching this from. What's your name? And also, if you've signed up for Bandcamp.com, if you have any suggestions or ideas for content, I'm all open right now. And I'll, like I said, I'll be uploading lots of interviews, lots of these videos, lots, lots of sheet music. And you also get access to, um, our. if you're a patron, you get access to our private house concerts here in Austin, Texas. You get access to everything I've recorded, all in this beautiful app that you can take with you anywhere. And you get access to download the song. So it's a pretty good deal for five bucks a month. And you're helping an artist. Uh, it's got a new way of making a survivable income, or a, not even just survivable, but what do they say? 
thrivable, a thri an artist that wants to thrive, not just survive. So you're helping somebody out in that area, uh, as well as all the other musicians that I support in my band and through my performances. And so I'm really excited about this, and I'm excited to involve you and get you on board and serve you however I can. It's fun to when I serve you, I serve me, and it's it's a great great process that we can share all this together, no matter where we are in the world. All right, so I'm turning off the video, and I thank you guys for tuning in. See you next time.